Mm -hmm. to, to, to take so for, for anyone out there listening, can, can you take them through what a a, a live event is, is like? You know, because it, <laughs> outside of the things that we know, so it's a shotgun start, and the, the, you know, some on social media have seen that that the party afterwards and and some of the the cool things to do. But can you just for someone who's considering it, maybe they're going to go to Orlando or they're going to go to my. I think you guys are in Miami and Bedminster again, yeah. so they're going to try to get to one of the events this year. Can you take them through? What, what what to kind of expect and, and a lot of the cool things that are happening? Uh, well, it's, I mean, in a nutshell, because I know that being a, the fact we weren't on TV last year, a lot of people heard of it, maybe tried watching it, but really couldn't find it. Um, it's the Phoenix Open meets the Ryder Cup meets uh, the Philadelphia Eagles football game. <laughs> Meaning... Um, there is the party atmosphere. You can't get away from it. I think that's the most endearing thing about it to the golf fan who, you know, is who spends a lot more hours at the course than probably they wanted to when they went there to see all their players on Thursday and Friday and, and doesn't get to see that many. With ours, you get to see them all in a very short amount of time. Um, it, mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a little bit of that team element coming in. It's never going to have the passion that the Ryder Cup used to have. I think a lot of that passion is now gone because – uh, they're, they're the, the European team yep. is going to be missing many of the, the people that were instrumental in making it as passionate as it was the last decade or two, actually, in Lee Westwood and, and Ian Poulter's case. Um, and they and if they if they stick to the way they're behaving now from a European side, uh, they're not going to be part of the captaincy in years. Come. I, I, I think that'll eventually change. It has to because they're. Their their resumes are just too solid, and the pettiness of of not liking the fact that we that these players uh, took a little bit of a maverick role and joined another league that in time will uh, will prove to be very coexistent with the rest, much like happened in cricket years and years ago when a very similar league to what we have started up. All the world governing bodies were against it, and in time they realized they couldn't fight it, and they just lived with it. And now everybody coexists peacefully, and and the sport is more popular than it ever was because of the creation of that league and the one day games. Um, this is going to go grow popularity in golf. No question about it. We're attracting people who would never have watched golf before because it's cool. We are getting people to come to tournaments who would have never gone to a standard professional golf tournament and spent all day out there if they're not interested in it. Um, uh, so there's a little bit of the Phoenix Open in that most people who go there aren't interested in golf. They go there for the scene. There's a little bit of the scene. There's a little <laughs> bit of, of the team aspect. There's a lot of great golf for the pure hardcore golf fan. You sit in one place five hours and you see every, you know, every great player on live, which was, in my opinion, a lot of the greats that, that currently play the game. Or not even in my opinion. That's a fact. Um, and and then if you want to hang out afterwards and, you know, the the Phoenix Open has the bird's nest. We have our bird's nest on site every single day. We, and it's, a, it's, it's not an affordable celebrity for a, for a performer. They're usually quite good. Uh, name, name entertainers who are taking the stage and play and providing the music. Uh, it's just a great time. They, you know, the coolest part for me, uh, younger generation than me, uh, maybe even you, uh, but a lot of people, I, I think it would actually uh, kind of span the spectrum at a lot of our events where the parking is on site, they're tailgating for hours and hours beforehand. They're playing cornhole and drinking and grilling in, in the parking lots before they get let in the gates three hours before the first uh, first heat, the first the uh, shotgun start. It's uh, it's you know there's a little a little bit of that amusement park slash kids enter tons of great kids entertainment. It's family uh, atmosphere, uh, and then there's the music, and then there's I mean some of them I saw jugglers I saw. I saw guys on stilts, all these things to, inter to, to entertain everybody, especially the kids, before things get started. And then that horn goes off, and, and the energy is incredibly high at that point. And, uh, and people have a great time. They have a great time. And then uh, everything ends at roughly the same time, and, uh, and everybody goes their way. It's, it's fantastic. It's great for the players, too. I mean, they, you know they get to hang out more together. Because they're not going, you know, I'm in the early wave, you're in the late wave. We don't get to go to dinner, even if we're staying together. They, ever, they get to hang out together amongst mm -hmm. their teams. But also, as the 48 uh, guys in general, because they're all usually at the same hotel, they usually have, like, almost a team room at that hotel for the for the whole group of them and their families. Uh, a lot of times it has ping pong and what have you, or, or pool table or something in there as well. So there's a lot more camaraderie there amongst these guys, too. Not to mention the fact that they all kind of feel like a little bit like Mavericks themselves.